Well, I just uh, wanted to do a quick catch up. Um, I got some inclusions that are in that top layer of fiberglass. Everything else down below is that metal impregnated Bondo stuff. Um, uh, I went with uh, the fiberglass top layer for the sake that, you know, because it's so hard and uh, it tends to uh, do a pretty good job uh, with being resi more resilient than regular Bondo. For a lot of these inclusions, I am just gonna use regular old Bondo and fill those in. But I think that for the shaping, uh, I got a pretty good setup going here. Let me get my little uh, homemade template that so pretty darn close i mean i i'm i'm prepared to say that that's good uh based on what i'm seeing here uh so yeah just thought i'd share with you guys let me know what your thoughts are i i you know i know some of you are like hey you're getting you're getting close to the metal yeah i know i i'm being very 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 careful here in this spot right here, there's going to be a little bit of a wobble um, just because, as you can see, it's getting pretty thick. <laughs> like, that's a lot, man. That's a lot. So, uh, yeah, I got to be careful. But profile looks pretty good um, with uh, factory. I think, I think it's pretty dang close, and I reckon that to the naked eye, uh, I don't reckon anybody's going to notice if it's off a little bit. Um, anyways, yeah, let me, got, let me know what you guys think. All right, guys, um, this is where we're at. I think it's turning out really good. Uh, I have just a couple more inclusions to take care of, just some pinholes here and there. Um, some additional glazing will take care of that. And then I'm, I'm done. Like, uh, I'm not going to get crazy with it. Uh, I think Jake said that you got to know when to stop, right? So anyways, um, yeah, after, it's, uh, after I get these pinholes taken care of, uh, I'm going to prime the whole thing, paint the whole thing. And, um, and then after that, it's time to go get, I'm going to get a, uh, I've decided to get a spray gun, a cheap Harbor Freight spray gun and get some um uh single stage clear uh matte i was gonna go gloss i may still go gloss i'm still back and forth on that but um and then uh spray the clear uh single stage over the top of everything so it'll be done it can cure and uh i'm gonna go ahead and um clear all the other pieces so that they all have the same um, top coat on them to protect them. So yeah, that's it. Hard in the fan running, it's, <laughs> I can barely breathe. That's the, uh, this side of the top coat done. Uh, I gotta flip it over um, and do the other, this is the top side, obviously, so I gotta get under there and get all that, make sure it's all dialed in. And then uh, get the clear clear on and let it cure. But turned out pretty good. That is not a dark spot. There is a kind of a line going down in the aluminum. So it's very misleading, but not a dark spot. This is the side that had the body work done. Can't even tell. I think it turned out really good, actually. I was really worried that I'd be able to do it to that scale or that level. Uh, but it turned out really great, I think. And then uh, it's darker over here, so you really can't see much, but there's the comparison. I think it turned out good, man. Pretty happy. <laughs> I'm actually 
embarrassed but also happy. This is the side. That was the stock side. That's the side I did the body work to. And I can't tell. So again, I guess that's a win in my book uh, that I confused myself. So. Okay. Well, this is the uh, pretty much finished product. Um, I just have to wait for the 2K clear coat to show up. It'll be here Tuesday. So uh, I'll need to go buy some cheesecloth or something and wipe this all down or whatever previous to spraying it. Uh, it would have been ideal to be able to spray it today, but I didn't think ahead and I didn't order 2K because I assumed it would be at the parts store. It wasn't. So there is unfortunately some trash that ended up in the, uh, in the base coat. And I could potentially wet sand that, but it's been my experience that uh, I don't do so hot at that. <laughs> I'm not a body guy. So I've got some thousand uh, grit over there and uh, I could wet sand it and, and, and try to smooth it out. Uh, I don't know. I'll go watch some YouTube videos and see how I feel about it. I, I don't know. I'm just a little bit timid about it because I, I've done it before and it, it, it just made it probably worse. Um, no, I remember now. It did. It made it way worse. So, anyways. And it's probably the quality of paint I'm using too. But as you can see, it turned out um, pretty good. I still ended up with some pinholes here. And I don't know. They, I don't know if that's just trash that was in the paint that is now showing up because I did not see that previously. So I, I'm really not sure. You can see some, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, guys, it's frame, you know, you know what I mean? I, I, maybe I'm worried about it too much. All right, that's it. All right, well, I just got done painting the cowl and uh, add some leftover black engine enamel and then uh, I wanted these to be gloss so I went to the parts store and they had some 1k clear coat so I went ahead and got that since not likely this is going to be a, hitting, uh, getting a lot of uh, solvents and uh, it wasn't that the other you know, the old factory stuff looked bad. It just, I wanted it to kind of match the rest of the bike in terms of uh, sheen, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, I just wanted to share it with you guys. Got that I uh, went ahead and these are uh, 1K. So I wanted those to be gloss. So that, yeah. So there'll be a few gloss pieces. Most of it will be matte, finished. Man, I got a big old mess to clean up again. Look at all that dust, y'all. That's, whew. I'm gonna be happy to get this all cleared out. And then I'll be able to start putting a motorcycle together right here. It's gonna be great. Pretty stoked. All right, so last night I just decided to get these put together and uh, they look pretty good. Nice contrast with uh, the brushed aluminum and then the uh, matte matte finish. Unfortunately, so this particular peg, I forgot about it. This one went in no issue. This one, for whatever reason, has always had problems. Um, well, I say always. I've only pulled it off and on this, I guess, second time now. But I got some booger, boogered up paint. I don't care. You know what? It It's fine. I, I have to... I get into this mentality where, like, if I get one scratch on my paint while assembling something, I get really upset. And I have to just accept the inevitable that I'm going to end up with some scratches on my paint. So hopefully they're not too terribly bad going forward. Um, but this is it. <clears throat> just wanted to share with you guys 
uh, this just just a very very initial stage. Um, then this is the uh, state of things right now. I've got it all laid out, and um, unfortunately, I ordered the wrong steering stem bearings for for my bike. I I don't even know how I ended up with that part number um, because when I went back and looked at what I'd ordered, they were for like a Yamaha. I, I don't even know what I was thinking. So whatever. Anyhow, so I've got the right ones on, on order. If any of you have a Yamaha, I'm selling those. All, they're all balls, um, steering stem bearings. I'm selling them on eBay. So whatever. Um, I got some, uh, swing arm bearings. They're the SKFs. So, uh, couldn't find any all balls. I'm sure they're out there, but these were very inexpensive and they're, you know, that's the OEM part number. So we're going to rock these SKFs and they're a good brand. I think at least they used to be. Um, so I'm going to be freezing those bearings heat and then uh, heating this up and hopefully they just pop right in. They, they were not hard to remove with my bearing puller. But um, I don't have a I don't have a press. I've got a vice, uh, but I really don't want to do that. So I'm hoping that my plan to to just pop them in with with the uh, temperature differential will help. Um, so once I get the bearings in and and so forth, uh, I, I could use some advice. So. What I was going to do is is find a, a box or something or even make a box that was roughly the same height as the engine when it's in the the frame, the, the chassis, the bike. And then just assemble everything onto uh, the engine from there. And then um, inevitably get to the point where the bike will stand on its own. Um, that was my idea. I saw how... Mike, you had um, gone the other way where the frame and the wheels and everything were assembled. And I think it looked like you put the engine in um, afterward, right? Attaching it to the swing arm and going in that way. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I think I'm right. <laughs> you know how that goes. Uh, the other thing I got to order is the new tires. So I'm going to get the wheels outside, get some wheel cleaner and clean them up as good as I can. Get new tires uh, installed. I'm going to go with some Pirelli. I think either the Angels or the Diablos. Uh, I think the Diablos are the, the dual compound. I can't remember now. Um, but that that's the ones I'm going to go with. Um, so we're getting close. Like I'm definitely going to be able to hit my June uh, deadline based on where I'm at now, barring any serious complications uh, that may arise. So I'm hoping that's not the case. I'm hoping that sucker just pops off and we're ready to go. I still have not had my uh, timing cover 3D printed yet, metal 3D printed. Still got to do that. What I may end up doing is for the time being um, is just running this. I'm not sure how well this is going to stand up to heat. 